Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have discussed about the the about the digital voltmeter. In today's the module four, again the unit two, we'll be discussing about the digital instruments. We might have come across the many type of digital instruments into day-to-day -day life, but we'll look after some of the digital instrument and how. The process or the principal operations of this one. Okay. So first, digital instrument. Digital instruments are usually they are very fast replacing the analog in the all the part department. The most of the parameters of interest are voltage, as we use the DVM, as we discussed in the previous videos. Then, then the current then the power frequency logic i think uh, you might be working in the digital logic designs the, all the topics will be undercovered on the logic frequency are like uh, all uh, whatever the frequencies have been in the terms of in uh, digital forms as we know that we are in the area of a digital media and whatever the digital communications we have done everything will come under in the that model and the current, as I said, digital emitters. So we are, will be using it, most of the components in our labs. So we can go in detail one by one. What is that digital instrument? It would be an invariable call, consist of an analog to digital converter in its input state. What is that analog to digital? So there's some processes will be usually working on but in detail, we will be not looking into that factors here. Here, um, just I am giving a basic idea of the how this analog to digital conversion takes place. Mm -hmm. and take a sample. If I have a sine waveform, and I am to need to convert it to the digital values, what it will be doing? Okay, as we done, remember in the sample and roll circuit, the waveforms have been charged to that level and they are labeled for example if you take a sine wave then it is cut into some, some many pieces there. that we usually call it as sampling process in that sampling process what we do after the sampling process the all it are, the, the waveforms have been cut into small parts and in that the time interval which might be given it if i take it as a 10 to set time interval I'll be considering it as a T1, T2, T3, up to T10. In the T1 interval from that starting to the ending where the T2 starts, till there we'll be looking after the, the maximum peak level and that will be quantizing to a one level. The new term key, the quantizing. What we are doing, we are trying to level up this level and we have to consider it as a value. So that value is usually called as a digital value and that we are converting that we call usually call it as a encoding okay we need not worry too much about that process just i give a basic idea about it next one that is the display block may be some kind of analog or digital in nature but uh, may consist of the following components yeah as we are using uh, the analog components only but with the conversion the additional factor will be there that's the DAC we say so resistor, capacitor, transistor, linear ICs, digital ICs, display devices, analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter, that we say ADC and DA, DAX, regularly we'll be using those things. Usually what we do, instead of what we use in the digital meters, instead of what we are using in the digital meter, is not much different from the analog meter. In the analog meter, we usually have a deflections there. So because of that deflection might be some kind of parallax error and all that we what we discussed in the model three unit two, three part. So avoid that. What is that? We are giving it in terms of a digital thing. Okay, same, both are same, but the errors, whatever that parallax error, that can be avoided. Visually, 
what we see data is in the digital form for any form of the signal processing parts. Might be using the data directly to the calculation, manipulations, or anything directly we can be using them. So, what are the advantages of digital instrumentation? And of course, I say increasing the availability everywhere, whatever is there, as I said earlier, it's a digital and the type of computer facility available to it. For example, if you're having any data, for example, if you're catching a mobile, carrying a mobile, and if you want to record it and you can transmit it to your WhatsApp or anything, that's what we call the digital thing. So we can communicate or we want to take it and you can decode it in a computer also. And usually they're very cost less, okay? Not a, I'm not telling about all the parts, but some of the other, they are very little uh, costly, not costly, we can say it is little less when compared to the other things. Why? As per it is making a, if the production is more and the requirements are more, that's what they start to product it more. And they usually will get, and the research work is carrying on many on such things. Okay, the main thing, it's availability and the type of computer facility added to it. In the second, we can say it as, the decrease in the cost because the various models required for the digital system, whatever the system is there, you can get it available easily. Okay. Next, we'll see to the digital multimeters. Okay. Here, the analog meters require no power supply because they get visuality better when there is a deflection there. And uh, due to that, uh, no power supplies even so that you can avoid some kind of electric noise and some isolation problem in the connections with it. So these meters are usually simple and expensive. But when coming to the digital meter, they offer high accuracy. And also they have a high input impedance and they are very smaller in size. They are like, a, what we said, the benefit is like they can keep a digital meter and keep awesome and you can view it from kind of having a distance movement compared to the analog meters there. Sometimes some of the devices, it might be an addition of a, some kind of a electrical uh, noises to it. There are three major classes of digital meters. They are usually panel meters, bench type meters, system meters. But panel meters are usually placed at one location like a, what, uh, like a display and they are very far. And uh, bench meters and the system meters are usually often the multimeter. They can read both AC and DC voltage current and resistance over several ranges. We need not to have um, different meters for that. All are inbuilt and combined to a one system. You can see a block diagram here is always a DC voltmeter. Current is converted to the voltage by passing it through some precise low strain resistance. Some kind of our conversion factor is carried on. While AC is converted into DC by employing rectifiers and filters, as we usually do, we have, I think you would need to have a basic idea of uh, rectifiers, half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier, and a bridge rectifiers. So what we are doing, this is one circuit will be made and that the modification will be carrying on for which purpose it is. Okay, you can look at the block diagram there. Usually we have a, a high path which is having a shunt resistance connected to it. And we usually have a DC attenuator, so to remove any, any unwanted signals and all. Then you can see the above, it's an AC attenuator. So if usually you know that when you compare to the DC, AC will be having a little higher. Levels. So they are converted and we are getting to the common point. Another is there below the Ohm's converter. So both are connected and given to the, the signal. There. And usually we carry it out for the analog to digital conversion. Usually if you can give it to the direct interface and we can give it to some of the devices which we require. Also, we can give it for the DCD output. But usually commonly as we see above in the circuit, usually it will have digital display to it. Okay. And the precision preferences will be given. So, so to see that it shouldn't go out of the array. Now, this we will discuss about some of the meters. The bench meters are usually mainly for standalone operations and usually operation-ridden. So they are independent of the thing and you can read it out 
operating reading. As I said there, there's some uh, resistance part by there. So what we are doing, we are to current providing, we are asking them to current to pass through it and we have a voltage and we can find out the resistance part like that way. Then in the system meters, provides at least an electrical binary coded decimal output, sophisticated connection and control capabilities. So they usually they are used as an interface part which are using it to a computer set. Uh, usually, a digital multimeter is made up of several analog to digital converter for counting and its an attenuation circuit. As I said, some converters are being used there, as I told earlier. Okay. The current to be measured is applied to that summing junction. There. You can see the summing junctions are available there. So, what we are doing here, we are passing it to the input of the op amp and let whatever the current is close you can see it in the below circuit there okay and it is passed to the some resistance so which is unknown to us okay which is unknown to us and pass and whatever the ii is given the ir is the the division there one is some because it is some and it's get divided you know uh, through the kcl so that is current is passed to the some unknown resistance and whatever the drop is there that we will be knowing there. So difference in that and the, the known current and we calculate the whatever the, the resistance there. you know V is equal to I into R or if you want to find something resistant perfectly so that and what we do we provide a constant voltage source and we see the voltage uh, voltage drop and we see calculate by using the the I I will be known there and then we'll be finding a known resistance or the vice versa. So what we are doing this circuit to all the open parts will be given to the analog to digital converter. And then we will be using that whatever the difference the de decade control will be constituted to calculate all the values there. So this we call as a counter decade counter. So this is digital readout. Okay. So digital readout what you are doing? You can take out the signal. I know some might be a confusion there. So we'll look, again I'll recall it by simply uh, saying it with the our uh, diagram available there. What you are doing here, see in the left side of the diagram is uh, not the op amp part. You can see the attenuator, compensated attenuator, current to voltage converters, constant current source, all this part is there. So what you are doing here we are giving some whatever the value has to be found, we have to give it. Usually these are voltmeters, basically. And what we are doing, we are fact doing the converter parts. For example, we, if we need a voltage, we know the voltage and we need to find a current. So what we are doing, we will just converting it by known resistance, pass to pass through the resistance, known resistance. So V is equal to I into R, again we are using it. And when we are compensated to uh, attenuator, so usually we have a consider some of the factors then. That means rectify. This is rectify are usually for the AC to DC convert. Yes, what we use in the our rectifier parts. So like that only. I said the converters we will be using the current to V R voltage, voltage to current. All the factors will all the wires so we will be using there. So what we are doing, we keeping it as one factor as a constant, and we will continuously do it. Very good example is the whatever the multimeter available in our labs. With that multimeter, we can find resistance, voltage, diode, even some capacitor, capacitor also can be formed. Okay, that uh, I'm not interfering, but I'm telling you what are the advantages. So what here, is that only we are finding an AC or only finding a DC? No, that available is everything is there. AC is finding like that we can need to be rectified and that we have to be converted. If you need to find a DC, you can give it directly and whatever the value is there, we are using. Because the input whatever you are giving us the DC. The factor is what the whatever the type of the circuit is required, we need to be used and we have to find out. For example, the converters, as we have seen here, the current to voltage, voltage to converters, whatever this is there. But here, what is the problem? We need to have an attenuator. We need to have an attenuator so that you can remove all the unwanted signal and we did not use it for any of the purpose. And uh, you might have observed in the multimeters that uh, the current might be ranging from microamps, milliamps at the voltage and the in the high voltage range. 
because the voltage factor will be more, but the current factors will be very less here. Remember, what we are doing in the current factors, usually the more the current, more the problem to the, the multimeters we see. So that's the one problem with this one. Okay, that you will be looking after with others on different circuits available there. So these are the references for this HS C, the electronic instrumentation. The other two are the references. Hopefully, you have understood the concept of the digital instruments and the, the concept of digital multimeter. Okay, thank you.